Uh, so when is the time that it will decelerate and, and drop to a lower attitude? Well, it is already in the uh, ellipt uh, elliptical orbit with the uh, perilune uh, of about 15 kilometers and the apelune uh, of about 100 uh, kilometers. Well, you, you look at this map, uh, the Bay of Rainbow is, uh, is, is in the red letters above. And now Chang'e 3 is on its orbit. I think it is approaching uh, the Bay of Rainbow, where it is supposed to land. Yes, it is approaching. As uh, Mr. Xi have mentioned, uh, it has a very big uh, thrust engine of about uh, 7,500 Newton. How uh, big an engine is that? Uh, it is the biggest engine ever used by uh, Chinese sp uh, spacecraft. Uh, we know that the Shenzhou spaceship use a uh, uh, thrust of about 2,500 2, Newton. But the, the descent is similar to the launching as well, because uh, uh, it, during descent, uh, lots of burning of the main engine is required, uh, not only to slow down, but also to achieve a halving position. Mm. Uh, a halving position is important because it would need some time to detect the surface of the moon so that it can choose the optimum landing site. Mm. Oh, there is a countdown on the left-hand side, uh, which says uh, the power, uh, the, the thrust engine is, is about is about to kick off in, in two minutes. Uh, this is um, th this curve. I think it's a parabola curve. That's that's the the, the trajectory of the, uh, the the green curve represents the theoretical uh, trajectory of, of the, the probe. probe. If the real uh, trajectory uh, is the same one with the designed one, it will be perfect and uh, uh, will, there's no problem. So there's a TTNC data that may be represented by red dots and should be overlapping with the green line. The green is the ideal one. The ideal one. If that, uh, the TTNC data achieve the ideal line, there is no human intervention at that, uh, at the, throughout the whole process. So now it is still on its own. It is doing what it's set to do. Exactly. And now it is engine is on, the thrust. The telemetry date shows that the propelled descending is begin. It is a major maneuver uh, for the Chang'e 3 probe. There were several distinct stages during the landing procedure, as we just mentioned. Uh, began with the circular 100-kilometer uh, orbit and then to the elliptical orbit. And now it decelerates into the landing approach. Uh, this would probably take seven to eight minutes. Uh, to reduce the speed from one, two kilometers per second to several meters per second. So it is a slow, slowly lowering itself towards the ground. We know there is a camera mounted on, on the lander. Uh, it will capture images of the lunar surface. Yes, of course. It will capture the whole descending process. W will that be a reference for the lunar probe to, des to decide uh, uh, what to do during the landing? No, that camera is only it, for Or is it uh, just for, for reference? Yeah, it's only for passive purpose. It's okay. to, for us to see uh, how it works. There are some devices on board the lander, for instance, the microwave and the laser uh, ranging devices, mm. and also uh, the, they can measure the altitude and the velocity of the vehicle. Uh, this will be the input of the control system to judge its uh, thrust and the attitude. Mm. On board the, sp uh, the, the probe. Yes, and that is why we choose. Which the is into the computer of the probe. Yes, to of, course. yes uh, of course. It's the, on course. The control loop. The control loop of the vehicle, the period, will be very small. That is why cho we choose an uh, automated mode rather than a manual or remote control mode. Mm. So if it is a manned mission, it will be quite different. All those things will be controlled by an astronaut rather than a, a computer or a robot. Yeah, it's similar to, uh, to driving a car, for example. You can drive a car by yourself. You can also have autonomous yes. dri dri driving so system, but it depends on how much uh, you want uh, to trust uh, it. Mm. 
while it is about to enter uh, the deceleration, which is a sharp drop of altitude from 15 kilometers. Uh, we can see it is a parabola curve that basically is how it looks like when you throw a thing. It's uh, basically slowed down so, uh, to such a speed that it's free falling into the lunar surface. But of course it's not a free fall, it's a controlled fall. It's controlled fall, fall because there are thrust uh, on, on board to control its speed. Well, the speed is now uh, 20 seconds. It will travel 600 meters. We can see the attitude control thrusters are working. All these animation. Uh, so the attitude control engine are now yes. working, are kicking uh, because it controls the speed of the uh, landing. Well, this is the camera uh, yes. on on the lander. On the descending camera. This is the first picture of the moon taken by Chang'e 3. Well, it seems uh, pretty close already. We can see the lunar surface very clearly. Yes, it is uh, only a uh, few kilometers above the lunar surface. And because there is no atmosphere, so it's a very clear image. And it is daytime. And it's also daytime. The lighting is, uh, is perfect for uh, picture taking. Well, we are above the lunar surface, 100 meters. That's very close. That's 100 meters, that's the distance Chang'e is going to travel until it landed on the moon. And it is descending from 100 meters to 30 meters above the lunar surface. And you are seeing the live feed from Chang'e probe. This is the pictures taken on the camera of Chang'e 3 of the lunar surface. These are the last 30 minutes for the journey of Chang'e 3 until it landed on the moon. While it is hovering again, it landed on the moon. Chang'e 3 is on the moon. The first Chinese lunar probe is on the surface of our celestial neighbor, the moon. Chang'e has landed. Looking very stable. But it seems uh, Chang'e is in good shape. Everything is perfect until now. This is the ch first Chinese vehicle to land on a celestial body. This is still the landing camera that is working on, the, on board the probe. But you could see a shadow of this probe. Um, uh, is, you know, you can see uh, the surface has been shuttled by itself. Surprisingly, we, we didn't see a lot of dust. Uh, yes. We didn't see dust and uh, also we, they, we also bear that in mind when we design this spacecraft that the dust uh, 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 well, is avoided and, mm. and then the, all the systems are functioning. Mm. Uh, even with dust, uh, we could still function some of the mm. uh, components. But to avoid dust, we have uh, adopted the free fall uh, of this spacecraft mm. uh, because it's uh, the weight is radically reduced, and then the gravity of the moon is uh, sm uh, mm. smaller than the Earth. So it's a, it's a safe landing. Mm. Uh, we're happy to see that. Uh, we know on board there is a solar panel, and there's also antenna for communication. So is this landing perfect for communication and energy uh, and produ production? Yes, of course. Uh, the, uh, the solar panels, we use the triple junction gallium arsenide uh, solar cells. This is, has the highest efficiency uh, in the uh, solar cells products of China. So uh, this will uh, ensure the uh, abundant uh, energy uh, needed for the vehicle itself. Mm. Can we say that the lifespan of the solar panel will decide the lifespan of, of the probe itself? The probe is designed for a one-year lifespan. That's because the solar panel will run out. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, the, because the, uh, every subsystem has a design margin uh, oh. for its lifespan. Maybe it can work longer, then uh, one, like, one the, uh, like the uh, robots of other countries. But some, some spacecraft, uh, like satellites, even designed for four or five years, uh, experience more than 17 years of mm. lifespan. So uh, it depends very much on the components mm. and not the solar panel itself. Mm. Uh, solar panels normally functions very well for a long time. Well, from the command center, it says the solar panel has been successfully deployed 
Now power is on. Yeah.